For 30 years, USCIB's International Leadership Award has recognized outstanding individuals who have led the way in promoting open trade, investment, and finance around the world. On the award's 30th anniversary, to those who have been honored by USCIB and by our members, we say thank you. Thank you for your vision. Thank you for your courage. Thank you for your dedication. Thank you for your leadership. If you look at how the competitive landscape has, has, has changed, uh, you know, in the old days, most of our competitors were, were American. Those days are largely at an end. The landscape is global, the competition is global. The United States was clearly the economic engine of the world, and our interests were based on open markets, market access, transparency, fair treatment. We are no longer the sole dominant power. We share power with other economies. You kind of have to put yourself back what was going on 30 years ago. Ronald Reagan was about to be elected president of the United States. We were in a huge economic downturn at that point. Interest rates were 20%. Unemployment was even higher than it is now. Deng Xiaoping was just starting to get China to be more outward looking. And there was about to be a huge political upheaval in the world. One of the great things that's happened during that period of time is that China has taken 400 million people out of poverty and created a middle class, a middle class of consumers. We're in a free trade world. Tom Friedman had it right, the world is flat. There are uh, communication systems that we never could have dreamed of. To, to think we would be connected this way with instant uh, data flow, uh, never would have been, been predicted 30 years ago. What is the single most important quality that an individual has to have in order to be a true leader in tomorrow's world? Persistence, a sense of urgency, a sense of passion. A leader creates an environment that's open and conducive to people doing things in a unified, collaborative way. It's setting a tone. One word, integrity. A leader generates a vision, that vision needs followers. Those followers need to be part of the leadership process. There's no limit to what you can accomplish if you don't care who gets the credit. You can't manage a multinational without going out into the world, being in the marketplace, seeing how things work. You have to understand diverse cultures and people. Courage. I'm optimistic about the future. There are challenges the United States faces, education, market access, and reducing the amount of government regulation. People in general worry that globalization means taking jobs outside of the country and, and developing growth initiatives elsewhere and not taking care of uh, our own domestic agenda. It's both. A viable economy is the best advocate for all of the other benefits that we would like to have in terms of a society. We have overstressed this planet. And if you question that, I'll give you one piece of data. About two billion people wake up in the morning and the first question on their mind is, will I have enough food and water and might I have any electricity today at all? So we've got to find a way as our population continues to grow to eight, nine billion people over the next few decades. We have got to find a way to use these resources differently core American values that are so evident in everything we do with our trade investment agenda is about fairness, it's about openness, it's about competitiveness. USCIB provides global business leadership in an increasingly complex and interdependent world. Working with our global affiliates, the International Chamber of Commerce, the Business and Industry Advisory Committee to the OECD, and the International Organization of Employers, 
We're tackling long-term challenges for which business must step forward with new ideas and solutions. If we look at the trade and investment area, the challenges are greater, but I think that the need for an organization like USCIB pursuing the issues that we pursue on behalf of our members is as great, if not greater than ever, because of uh, the changes uh, that have taken place. The need for advocacy in U.S. business today is met by the USCIB, and it's a crystal clear need. We need to put together the best thought, position it to all of our audiences, international as well as national, and then advocate it consistently over time. The council does that very well. There was one particular measure that we took that uh, I was very, very proud of, and that is the 1998 Declaration on the Rights uh, of in the Working Place that simply listed freedom of association, the right to collective bargaining, non-discrimination, and no forced labor as the major labor rights in the workplace. Through my work with USCIB, I could much better understand other industries' issues and opportunities. And that helped me tremendously in dealing with my own. Because you get so focused on your specific problem. So it's very important to have organizations like this where we can learn from each other and, and take unified approaches. Without exception, these leaders have demonstrated their dedication to the values that USCIB espouses. Open markets, innovation, sustainable development, and corporate responsibility. They have done so with vision, with courage, and with compassion. In the years ahead, American business will face an increasingly complex world. With the kind of leadership demonstrated by the individuals we have honored with the award, we can build a better world for our children. Keep your eyes on the prize. Inspiration, vision, decency. Say something and mean it. Say what you mean and mean what you say. But the trick has got to be keep your eyes on the prize. <laughs>